What is happening everybody? Welcome back to the Planet Chinchilla YouTube channel. Josh here with PlanetChinchilla.com. And guys, today we are excited to bring you a little bit of a different kind of video. I know that we have some videos on the channel where it's me sitting here and chilly behind me, but this video is not really a um, topic that I've created. This is gonna be a question and answer type video from your guys' YouTube comments that you have left. So basically I will be reading off my computer screen right up here. Some of the questions that I'm seeing that I thought would be really helpful for anybody to get the answers to that might view this in the future as a new subscriber or a new person watching the video, or maybe some of you who have already watched a ton of the videos on this channel, it'll help you too. And guys, a special announcement on this video. Because of the holidays that are right around the corner, today is it's going to be November 10th. So we're only about a month away from some of the major holidays here. I wanted to give back to the subscribers on this channel. We're just now finally starting to get closer to 300. And I want to say thank you to you guys. So we are going to be doing a giveaway of sorts, if you will. And you need to make sure that you stick around to the end of this video for those details. Again, watch through the video, stick around so that you get the details on the giveaway. I will discuss them at the end. And guys, in case you're curious, you know, what would spark a YouTuber to do a giveaway, um, you know, just to get a little bit more real with you guys on that level real quick. It, obviously has to do with saying thank you back to you guys for being subscribers but also 2020 has been a historically bad year i think for a lot of people i can tell you guys even on a personal level with me that it, it's impacted me a lot um it's been a really hard year in general um clearly no daycare for my four-year-old son soon to be four-year-old son and you know, my wife's work was in question a long time. You know, nobody's getting out and doing social activities anymore. So, yeah, it's uh, it's hit me where it hurts too. But this has been a blast doing this with you guys and really trying to pump out the content on Planet Chinchilla. And I deeply apologize that, you know, the first couple minutes of this video was this. But, you know, if you don't like that as somebody who views content on somebody's channel, then you're not, I don't know, you should like it because, I mean, this is the content you're absorbing. You should be getting to know the creator or, you know, connecting on that level. So I guess if you don't like it, you know, the exit button's not far away. But, and that spans across, I mean, not even just Chinchilla fans, but all over the world, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything else that's been going on in, even though the channel is small, you know, approaching 300 subscribers, you know, and coming up on the holidays and entering into this time where hopefully we're coming into this transition into this new year, you know, hopefully this can be something a little exciting or something cool for the channel heading into the new year. You know, a lot of people want to put 2020 in the review mirror and be done with it. And I am completely on board with that. And don't get me wrong. I mean, this has been a phenomenal year for you know, me obviously working from home instead of going to an office and having the opportunity to even make this channel because of what's happened in the world. But, you know, I just thought it was time to do something for you guys or just do something for someone in general. So, of course, you know, as a YouTuber being completely transparent with you guys, of course it's to get interaction on the channel. Like, I, I don't want to sit here and lie to you and say that that's not part of it, but you know, in all reality, it is and it isn't. You know, if that happens, it happens, but it was just time to say thank you to you guys and to do something a little bit different on this channel moving into the new year. You know, I hope you guys are all planning to have great holidays, whether you got a social distance or whatever that case may be with what's going on in this pandemic. But so that's my plan. And while I'm not, you know, stupid enough to think that it makes that big of a difference to anybody to do a giveaway. I mean, the point is just to hopefully start flipping the script on 2020. Like I said, let's get it out of the way and move forward. And hopefully this, you know, is something a little bit different than not all of the other YouTube channels are doing. So again, we'll cover that towards the end. But for now, let's go ahead and start diving into some of these common questions that I see from new chinchilla owners or someone just 
thinking about getting one in general. We're starting right now. All right, guys, so question number one is about dust baths, and it was actually one of the most recent comments on the channel, and it is, how frequently and how long do you give them a dust bath for? I understand that overbathing can dry out their skin. Yes, this is true, and here's what I do. Everybody's going to do things a little bit differently, especially if you read any blogs on chinchillas, if you watch any of the YouTube channels, everybody's a little bit different, but one of the general consensus that will be reached about the bathing is probably twice per week is definitely good in a minimum. I wouldn't probably go over three times per week and they will typically get out of the dust bath container when they're ready. Now, again, this could vary based on the chinchilla. Like Chili here, I don't know if she's gonna show her face much of this video at all, guys, so I apologize. She's in her nesting box, but some chinchillas just love their dust baths and she is definitely like that. Like seriously, she is obsessed with her dust bath. But for the most part, she'll come out of that container and kind of start losing interest and skedaddling around another direction. So I would shoot for minimum of two, three would be okay let them decide when they're done but if they tend to overly enjoy that dust i would probably say 10 to 15 minutes is good maybe 20 because they're going to get in and out right every time they get in and roll around they'll come out they'll play a little bit and then they'll go back in and then back and forth back and forth keep an eye on it you'll be in good shape using those tips all right guys the next comment i want to cover is from madison broxton and she says a chinchilla will come to the side of their cage eagerly whenever I go to him, but as soon as I open it up, he shoots to the other side and literally spazzes if I even try to put my hands on him. I want to, sorry, if I try to put my hands in the cage. I want to take him out to let him roam and play, but I also don't want to terrify him. What can I do? Well, Madison, here is your answer. Nobody knows. Kidding, Madison, that would really suck if that was my answer for you. Here's the deal. You didn't give much context to the scenario at play. How long have you had the chinchilla is the first question I would have. Um, where did you get your chinchilla, um, pet store or breeder? Yes, that makes a difference because if you got it from a breeder, you could have asked a lot of questions to the breeder about how social they are, how much they like being handling, but regardless of all of those questions that I don't have the context for, here is what it sounds like to me. And all of the other chinchilla owners, feel free to step in and tell me I'm an idiot and that's probably not true. It sounds to me like he is getting there. It sounds to me like he is showing that he has that social side to him, that he is getting close to wanting to play and interact, but you're still scaring the crap out of him when you open the cage. So here would be my recommendation. First, do as much as you can with him in the cage. I know that that sucks, trust me. I. I went through it. Sometimes she's in moods where I still have to go through it. Like these chinchillas, they can have some mood swings and emotions, but do some interacting with him inside of the cage. It could be something as simple as sitting here and talking to him on his level. Try not to tower over top of him. Get down on his level. Remember, these animals were hunted in the wild. They know that they're at the bottom of the food chain and things scare them easily. So, you know, sit here at this level and interact with them. Get them to come out, give them a treat. Hey, Chili, what you doing, girl? You sleeping? Yeah, I know I'm not a very good owner waking you up. But start there and be patient. Just wait, it will come to you. If you need to be able to transport in and out of the cage and it's just not happening easily by hand, then you have a few options. You could use the dust bath container, wait for your chinchilla to enter it, cover your hand over it, place them down in the playpen. You're talking opening a door, dust bath, cover, plate on the floor. It's a five second swap. It's not like you're carrying them 500 yards and they're suffocating in there. It's literally just to main control of them during that initial bonding phase so you can get them into the playpen. Because once they're out of that cage and they're in a playpen with you, it changes things so dramatically because they no longer have a choice but to interact with you. There's mesh walls. And don't get me wrong, they might sit on the other side of it scared of you, but it's still you and a chinchilla, not in a cage, where they can move around freely 
I promise you, and you can come back and leave a comment if I'm wrong, that little fella is going to jump on you after a few times in there. He's going to start warming up to you. So to recap that, patience, interact with him, even if you're not getting it your way, give it to him their way. Act like this is Burger King. They got to have it their way because that's how these guys are. And keep at it. Build that bond. It can be talking for five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. Give him a treat. Keep it going. It sounds like he's getting really close. Keep us posted on how that goes for you. All right, Mr. Mendez asked me on a video that I did that was one of the short videos about fleece liners, how often to wash them. I wash these fleece liners right here inside this cage twice per week. Is that the magic answer? I don't know. I don't care because it works for me. She's never had an issue with it. The cage always smells fine to me and it works for my life. If you want to wash it four times a week, go for it. Two times a week, I'd say is minimum. I think if you go once, you might get an odor, um, but I would wash the fleece twice per week, get them out. I would always take it outside and like shake it off, get rid of the debris that's on it because if you throw these in the washer, without doing that, you have like the hay residue, pee res like just do it. You're saving your washing machine and not making the washing machine stink. Wash them. Obviously, make sure they're dry. Put them back on. Good to go. Mr. Mendez, hopefully that answered your question. Chris Hollis said, good video on one of the previous videos and I plan to adapt soon. Chris, that is awesome. Congrats. Let us know how it goes. Donna Shank. Hopefully I said that right, Donna. You didn't necessarily ask a specific question, but I am just reaching out to you in this video personally to say thank you for all the comments you leave on a pretty regular basis. There's a lot of you that do that. Mr. Mendez was one of them too, but this is more of just a shout out for saying thanks for always participating in the videos on the channel. It makes it really fun for me, you guys. I bet you guys don't realize that about YouTubers, but when I get the comments, I get like excited to respond and I feel like I respond fast, which I don't know if that's creepy or not, but. I get excited about it. That's what makes this what it is. So thank you, Donna. Let's move on. All right. So Catherine Dixon, it sounds like she's in Florida, had a very good comment. I won't read the whole thing, but basically she was making it a point to state that um, there was an issue whenever they had to rescue a chinchilla and they weren't extremely well versed already in the ideal temperatures for chinchillas and they were using a garage initially she nothing bad happened so just throwing that out there right away she caught it awesome job to her um, but i wanted to touch on that for anybody else in warm climate areas yes you can still adopt chinchillas and it will be fine but there's also some common sense that needs to come into the mix such as obviously you need a room that has an ac or temperature control and humidity control and you need to trust that ac that it's not going to break um, that if you were to leave for a week, it will be running and there's no issue. And honestly, it's an air conditioner. Like, do you really trust anything like that forever? I don't. I mean, I feel like I have an appliance or something on my house breaking every other day. So even if you trust it, even if it's brand new, have someone stop in, check on these guys, especially if you're in those hotter states. You know, for me in Illinois, this time of the year, if my heating and cooling in my house broke, I really don't have anything to worry about because it's like 64 degrees right now. Yeah, I know. Super crazy for November, but that's what I mean by common sense. If you know that there's a potential for your house and this guy getting well over like that 75 to 80 degree Fahrenheit mark, do something about it. Another person asked what playpen I use. I use the Jess Pet 61 by 61. Jess Pet does make a 45 by 61. Unless you're a like shorter person or you never want to get in there with like a child i love bringing my four-year-old in there sometimes too i would i think it's like a 13 dollars difference guys get the larger version of it they're extremely durable i love that playpen i've been using it for over four years just pet 61 by 61 inch i will put a link in the description below for you guys for that but that is what i use for my chinchilla somebody else posted i'm not sure why they posted this they said a chinchilla can get wet they just can't swim, which is 100% false. I just want to make sure that that is in this video. Your chinchilla should not be getting wet and they should definitely not be swimming. Um, you know, a water bottle drip here and there on their fur, as long as it is clear that that is resolving itself and the whole bottle isn't leaking on them, that is one thing, but giving them a bath in a sink, no, can't do that. Doesn't, I don't know why they even left that comment, but I wanted to make sure 
I put that on here. The chinchilla should not be getting wet. That's why dust exists for the chinchilla. Somebody else posted that they are scared of getting a second chinchilla and starting that bonding process. And here's the deal. I do not blame you. I am also scared of this. That is why I have not pulled the trigger to get her a cage mate or a, another chinchilla, even if it's in a cage next to her. I really want one. Like, I really want either a black or another white chinchilla, but I'm scared of the fact that I'm, I'm stuck in my own comfort zone, basically. Everything right now works for me and Chili here. Like, and that doesn't mean that it won't work when I get a second one, but it is scary. Um, and I don't have a ton of good advice for you on that, except research as much as you can, take advice from breeders, you know, read and watch as much as you can about it, take it slow and make sure that they're not forced into a situation before you go, you know, like full on interacting with one another. And also, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Like, they are happy alone if that's all that they know. Like, I don't think that her getting another chinchilla is going to severely increase her quality of life. I don't think it would decrease it if it worked out well. Right now, I just, I haven't been able to move myself forward to do that yet, so I feel for you. And I really don't have a 100% concrete answer on how to help you, except that I do know it's possible for it to work very well. I do know it works very well all the time, and it will probably work for you too. So, unfortunately, you have to make that decision for you. You do you, my friend, you do you. Okay guys, so for the questions and answers portion of this video, that concludes it. If I went down the entire list, this video would probably be like five hours long, which is a thank you to you guys for commenting so often. I do want this to be a habit in the future. Probably one video per month is gonna be catching up on comments, putting them out there so that everybody can get a lot of their questions answered in the best fashion possible. And now I wanna talk about that giveaway, how it will work, how we're gonna do it. So here's what we are going to do for the giveaway. In order to enter, all you're gonna have to do is give us a thumbs up on the video and drop your YouTube, you know, your ID, username for YouTube down in the comments below. Starting for November 9th, 2020, all of those will basically just be copy and pasted into an entire bucket of all of the names that entered. So if you saw the video, watched it till the end and you know what to do and you drop that name down below, you will be entered to be drawn for that giveaway. So again, give us a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel, drop your YouTube user ID down in the comments below. One week before Christmas, we will pick the winner of the giveaway. And I'm sure you were super excited that it was something huge like a, a brand new Midwest Critter Nation cage, which trust me guys, when we're at that level on this channel, I will be happy to send somebody a Midwest Critter Nation 2 cage. But right now we are not at that level. We're coming up on 300 subscribers, so I've got to keep it realistic for me and my family as well. So for this giveaway, I wanted to go with fleece liners. And I know what you're thinking, not everybody has a cage that supports fleece liners. Good point. If you happen to be one of the winners that does not use fleece liners for your cage, we will substitute that amount with, with your choice of food, treats, or toys for your chinchilla cage. So that amount will be 50 US dollars. We can substitute it out instead of the fleece liners. Basically, once we draw that the week before Christmas, I will just reach out to that person with the tag. I will post it in a um, a thread basically or make a quick YouTube live of it or just post a video of it who won so that we can communicate with each other on how to get that to you that is how you enter that's all you have to do give us a thumbs up drop your name down in the comments and be ready to communicate with us the week before Christmas so that we can line that up for you the exact date for that will be Friday December 18th exactly one week before Christmas so again make sure you guys do that if you would like to participate in this and again this is a thank you back to you guys and as always guys like thank you so much let's wrap up 2020 on a positive note it has been a blast doing these for you guys i want to keep doing these for you guys clearly i want to grow the channel so again be sure to give us a thumbs up when you do that the youtube algorithm loves us it makes all of these videos go out to other chinchilla owners so the thumbs up is very important helps us out a ton subscribe to the channel, leave us some comments, and never forget to visit planetchinchilla.com. Tons of useful resources on that website. 
Everything is authored by myself. Again, that's planetchinchilla.com. And be sure if you're a new chinchilla owner, check out the ebooks download page. You can use promo code chincare50 to get 50% off my ebook. Otherwise, thank you. I hope you guys plan on enjoying the holidays, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care.